the surrounding green Take care of the nature Before it takes care of you Welcome to another exciting episode of Art Check. My name is Dan Masheri and today's episode, our focus is on Jiko Koa, a Jiko that saves time, economically friendly, as well as environmental friendly. Jiko Koa, BAN, a Kenyan-based energy-saving Jiko stove manufacturing company, was focused on energy efficiency and environmental sustainability. The Kiambu County-based institution, BAN, is the only company in Africa that was recognized during the prestigious event. Founded in 2011, BAN manufactures its own designs, sells and distributes Baumas Jikos, which is a Swahili word for cooking stoves like Jiko Koa and Kunio Koa, not only in Kenya but also in Tanzania and DRC. So a brief introduction of who you are. My name is Freedom Medusela. Um, and uh, this is my third year working here at BAN and I quite really enjoy working here and I work here as a process analyst. All right. Yeah. So, uh, of course, this is, uh, you told me this is the receiving area. Uh -huh. But uh, my first question is, being a receiving area, uh, does the material you acquire recycled or new? Uh, they are new. They are new. Yeah, there is no recycled material. So every, every material that is being received here, all of them, they are new. All right. Yeah. And what materials are we talking about here? Um, we have different materials that we usually make for the store. Like, for example, we have Dalvalu material, we have stainless steel material, and we have Siadasia material. All right. Yeah. Could we see the materials you're talking about? Yeah. We can see, for example, these are the Siadasia materials. Uh, they're in the form of sheets. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, we have uh, st uh, stainless steel material. They are stored there, and we have galvan material. They are stored below there. So we were talking about these tubes, and uh -huh. what are they used for? Uh, these are combustion chambers. As you can see them, they are already cut into their shape and already formed. Uh, so basically, that is the final form of the combustion chamber. But initially, when it comes, it comes in form of a tube. Yeah. So this process, you will see it as we go back to the other processes. Okay. Yeah. So um, to, to be precise and just to make it down, break it down for our viewers, in a scenario where what happens to the stoves that are already... Do these stoves get worn out? And um, what do, where do we take those materials to? Um, these stoves are... Uh, Currently, they are, they are durable, but for a particular period of time. Right. So, over, they can last for over a period of three years because they have a, a warranty. Yeah. So, if anything happens to it in between, so it can be repaired easily. You've shown me some couple of sheets, uh -huh. like some couple of sheets. Yeah. How many jikos will that sheet make? Um, each, each and every sheet uh, contains specific material. For example, if you want to make a specific material for the sheet, uh, it, has to, it has its own measurements. So we have some, uh, a particular material that is called a side body. So a side body, uh, it uses uh, CRSA material. And CR when you use CRSA material to cut the side body, it cuts around 15 parts. Yeah. Alright. So we are done with process one, uh -huh. the receiving area. Yeah. And we head on to the second process. Sure. Alright. We've been to process uh, one. Now we are in process two. How do we go about it? What happens here? Uh, basically what happens here, they are cutting a CRSA sheet for the side bodies, like the ones that I told you about. Okay. So this is the process for the side bodies. Uh, they start by cutting it into small pieces. Do they have measurements? Yeah, they have measurements. What measurements are we talking about? Um, those measurements they are being set using using uh, they are being set using their their on the machine okay. right right over there. So this guy usually sets it at 238 millimeter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, because there's, there's, it seems like there's one long one, uh, how many 
for one sheet, how many materials, how many small pieces can you get? It cut three. Three. So it cut three. One, two, and three. Yeah. Ah, okay. And now after after this process, because they, they are received, then they are here. Uh -huh. After this, where else? After what this. Else? So here on the CRC, it takes uh, it undergoes three processes. One, they cut it like that uh, into big, big square parts, okay. and the second process, they cut it into small, uh, small strips. Okay. Yeah. So one sheet for one sheet. Uh -huh. One sheet for one. Ah, oh, okay. All right. So this is process two, and we are done with process two. Yeah. After process two, now they come to the other machines. Process three. Yeah. Okay. Fine. In which side process three? Side. To these other machines okay. now. Yeah. So which um, side? So when they are when they are already chopped into strips on this side, so they have to come they have to come to these other machines. This one? Yeah. This one machine this machine. So this big machine, uh, it cuts big parts. Uh -huh. After it cuts big parts. Then we have uh, the other machine which cuts small parts. All right. So from here, it's big parts from that point is. Yeah. Ah. Okay. All right. So that is for the Sierra CA sheet. But basically here, there are many processes that are undergone. So for the Sierra CA sheet, they are being punched by the big machine, and we have other many parts that they are used to be punched by the small machines. Okay. okay. So this is. So process three and uh -huh. we are done. Yeah. So we head to process four. Yeah. Okay. So we are done with the process area. Uh, now the next area which we are going is the powdering section. The boundary section. Powdering. 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 Section. Yeah. Okay. So on the powdering section. Here is where all the process starts. So after we are done with the side body, on the other processes from cutting, from shearing, that is, then punching on the machine, then this is the final stage of the side body. Okay. After it's like that, on that process, and now it will, it will come out this area, it will be clean, that is by washing with soap. After washing by soap, it will be dry. After being dry, then the person at the other end will hang them. After hanging them, then they will start powdering, the process for powdering. Okay. Yeah. Well, my question to you, Freedom, is uh -huh. what is the importance of powdering? The importance of powdering is to cover it. Like if, if you see it like that, it doesn't bring out that um, appearance, that, okay. that, that appearance of the soap, like attractiveness. Yeah. So we powder it with a black, with a black powder. Uh, after powdering the black powder, then it will, it will be placed inside the oven. Then that uh, it will be cured. And then that is the process of cure now. Yeah. The, is the cutting also done there? The? The cutting in smaller pieces. No. No. The cutting of the smaller pieces, it has already happened back right. there. Yeah. Okay. So this is powdering and... Yeah. Uh, then powdering, then it will go to the assembly and to be formed. So, okay. so this is step five. Yeah. After this, is there anywhere else? There are, is there a place where they are being assembled? Or? Yeah. Now it's the assembly, uh, which we call this the final assembly. Okay. Uh, the final assembly. Could we head there? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Basically, this is how the process has started for okay. making the the jiko. Okay. Um, as you can see here. Here is the, we have the initial part after it has this already one. been powdered. Yes, after it has already been powdered and cured, then from there it will be rolled into this shape, a circle shape. Okay. Then after rolling into a circle shape, they will rivet the backing plate. After riveting the backing plate, they will rivet the bottom at that at that other place. After riveting the bottom, now at that area, we will just head there. I just have to be on this end. Now at this place, um, 
at this place here they are riveting the handles. Okay. They are riveting the handles into the side body using the riveting and the riveting gun. And inside there, they are, they are using the rivet. As you can see this, they will be using um, they will be using the bridge to rivet inside this uh, the bottom. Uh, yeah. So now, how much time does this, this one take? Like the whole to form the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, that one will take around uh, 40, 45 to 50 minutes seconds. Yeah. All right. So. What is, you mentioned something in there. What? Uh, inside there, we call that the insulation room. And in the insulation room, what happens is they cut the insulation, they place the, insu the insulation for the bridge under bottom. Uh, then they put the insulation, the sideboard insulation, which will be covering this whole area. Yeah. Should I feel the jiggle? Yeah, sure. It's kind of loose though. Ah, this one is not riveted yet. Okay. Yeah. Plus the logo and everything. Uh-huh. The logo will be riveted inside in front of there. Okay. Now we should just head over there where you can see how they rivet the logo and how they rivet the condent also. Sure? So after here, yeah. it's the final stage. Yeah, we go to the final stage now. All right. Everything is a process and making this Jikos is a one of them but we really need to have a sit down and know more about this Jikos as well as the brains behind it. This is after the break. Welcome back. Now, all of you at home are curious as I am to understand the brains behind it as well as why the reason as to why they came up with this GECO that is environmental friendly. It conserves uh, the fuel and also energy as compared to the normal GECO you use. <laughs> My energy will even keep up. <laughs> so a brief introduction of who you are and your position. Sure, yeah. Uh, my name is Peter Scott. I'm the CEO and founder of Burn, mm -hmm. Burn Gicos uh, and Burn Design Lab. Okay. And so uh, I've been working in Gicos for about 22 years. All right. Thank you very much for having us. The first question uh, our viewers or any person out there is uh, what makes this Gico different from the others? Well, so this Gico will use about 60% less fuel. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the, the very the big difference. And, you know, we've sold over 600,000 Gicos. Yeah. So, you know, there's millions of people in Kenya that can attest that it really does make a huge difference uh, for people. So, you know, this, the ceramic one, or the clay one that they had, was designed in the maybe the 1980s. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't a lot of development between that time and when we arrived in, in 2013 and 2014. All right. So, um, but yeah, there's a number of things that go into it. So it uses very special materials. They're very low mass, so they heat up quickly. They're super insulated, and then you're able to control uh, airflow into the stove. Mm -hmm. And if you get the air and fuel mixture right, you can burn macaw very cleanly. So it burns it as clean as LPG 
something. From the perspective of um, fine particulates. So are you saying this Jiko is environmental friendly? Yes, yes, yes. So, how, so how, 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 how? Oh, well, because it uses so much less charcoal. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a normal family will use about um, 700 kilograms of charcoal uh, each year. Mm -hmm. And so now they're only going to use maybe 300 kilograms of charcoal. Mm -hmm. So that uh, difference in 400 kilograms of charcoal, that equals to about three tons of wood. Okay. So if they use Argico, they'll use three tons less wood. Of course, there's always the aspect of the brains behind it. What made you come up with such an enormous idea? Uh, well, you know, I've been working in Jikos for 22 years, so I've learned a lot. But I've also uh, realized I had to put together a very good team. So Burn is 230 people. Uh, we have about 10, 15 mechanical engineers that are constantly working on this, you know, these small design improvements to improve durability and mm -hmm. performance. You know, like the pot support height or the sufria. So even if you change that by one millimeter, you'll have a big impact on performance. Mm -hmm. So we're always making small changes uh, even over the last five years mm -hmm. to make these improvements. So, um, but yeah, the idea was that, you know, people in Sub-Saharan Africa s uh, spend a lot on charcoal or maca. Mm -hmm. So about 15 billion dollars every year is spent on households. On households. Yeah. But um, this is the first company I've been into and I've seen lots and lots of women working here. Yeah. yeah. Why, why, why? And I'm so, um, I wanted to ask that question specifically. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think if you look at it in the world, there's about uh, half of us are men yeah. and half of us are women. Mm -hmm. So that seems like a good, a good starting place. So half, half. Well, now it's about 60-40, so we don't enforce it. It just kind of floats. You know, a lot of people in our sales and activation team yeah. are, are women, mm -hmm. um, as well as operators, as well as designers, yeah. and, um, and sales and marketing team, and mm -hmm. production. Yeah, so it just seemed normal to us to have a, a mixture of men and women. You know, our main consumer of the product are women. Exactly. So I think, you know, I think women in Kenya enjoy buying a product from other that women. favors yeah. them, and, yeah. you know. And uh, w when I was working with Freedom, yeah, he walked, to, and I noticed something in this because is that you can save more than eighteen thousand shillings a year. Yeah, correct. How, yeah. How? Because it is, it yeah. is, you know, uh, in Kenyan perspective, that's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, you know, a, a normal family. I mean, it you know, it depends. Every family is different. Yeah. But if a family was just using a maca. They would spend about 30,000 shillings mm -hmm. uh, every year. Every year. On, on maca for cooking. For cooking. Yeah. So Especially, you know, with the charcoal ban, the prices of charcoal uh, went up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you think about it, if you spent 100 shillings a day mm -hmm. uh, on maca, then that's 36,000 shillings every, every year. And then so our stove saves even more than half. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, in that case, you would save 18, more than 18,000 shillings. You'd, sort of, 18, you'd save maybe 20,000. But most people use a mixture, right? So people will use maybe maca for githeri, maybe kerosene or LPG in the morning. Mm -hmm. So most people aren't cooking every meal with maca. It's maybe kerosene or LPG in the morning, and then lunch, dinner is maca. And so... And how is this product uh, received in the market? Well, again, as I was saying, you know, we've sold uh, over 600 and... Well, 624,672 mm -hmm. stoves as of today. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think people have really seen the, the benefit mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. um, and then we, people recognize that we really take care of our customers. So we have a two-year warranty. We have 60 customer care centers mm -hmm. across the country. So if you ever have any issue with your stove in that two-year period, you walk it down the street, they'll repair it for free and give it back to you. But many, you know, big companies do not provide that level of customer service. Yeah. So we really care for our customers. Because this Jiko is environmental friendly. And, you know, being a Kenya being a developing country, yeah. we have a 10% percentage of forest cover we have to attain as yeah. per the UN standards. Yeah, yeah. Do you think we can? Yeah, that oh, absolutely. You have such innovations like this. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, for right now, our main products are the Jiko Koa, which uses maca, yeah. and then we also have Kunio Koa, which uses wood. Yeah. We're also piloting uh, selling sustainably produced charcoal, and so uh, we'll, um, we're just doing test pilots now with a number of supermarkets, so you could go in and buy maca, mm -hmm. and you know that it's uh, certified sustainable. 
right. So yeah, some of that is made from invasive species. Mm -hmm. So there are a couple of types of trees in Kenya, mm -hmm. like uh, Maleshwa, Thenge, Prosopis, mm -hmm. that uh, you are actually a nuisance to farmers, so you can process those into charcoal or macaw. And so those will be available soon in, in a number of stores. So you're saying the environmental feature is, um, the feature of environment in Kenya is bright. Yeah, I think that, I mean, there's definitely a level of awareness. Yeah. People are, uh, the, I think the government is, is trying to make strides in it. The problem is, is that now, you know, uh, Kenya cannot meet its forest needs yeah. uh, or its lumber or timber needs for cooking or for building. So now yeah. we're importing all of this. If we were managing our forests uh, better, then we could make it like a great sustainable resource that creates jobs. And, and so, yeah, no, no, it's, it's, it's possible to do, but more, yeah, more work is needed. All right. Many thanks, Peter, for, join, for making time for us. Yeah, no, of course, a pleasure. I'm sure our viewers would really love to, you know, um, buy the jikos that we've talked about and also be environmental friendly at the end of the I usually say quality over quantity despite the amount and with this Jiko you'll never go wrong. First of all it's economically friendly, conserves energy and it's affordable. You can use it back at home. I hope you've learned something in today's episode. My name is Anne Masharia. As I've always told you, if you really want to make an impact, find your bro.